Okay, so this next photo I'm going to process in Adobe Camera Raw is actually from the same vantage point as the previous photo, except I'm literally turned around. I took a few shots, and this one is a little too dark. This one's a little too bright. This one's just right. So I'm going to pick this one, open it up, and we're going to start processing this photo. Now if I press the P button, uh, it's curious to see as to what uh, auto corrections Adobe Camera Raw has done with the distortion. And you can see here its attempt. But in doing so with the wide angle, the very extreme edges have this uh, skew. So um, let's just go through the color stuff and then I'll see if I want to do anything with that skew. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I leave it alone because it... It's almost enhances the perspective in some shots. But here we go. Um, I'm going to lower all the highlights just to see how that looks. Sometimes it's nice to have slightly blown highlights in some shots where you really want that glow. But here, if I lower the highlights all the way down, it, it dulls it down a little too much. So I'm going to raise it back up just a little bit. Um, I don't think raising the shadows is going to do much. It kind of flattens out the photo. Contrast. Almost darkens the overall photo in a way. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to change the white balance to tungsten. I like to do that with my cityscapes, although it's a little too blue here. I'll raise it up just a bit. I like to give my cityscapes a, a really nice cool color because it gives it the nice almost cold sci-fi type look. Now I'm gonna play with the clarity and for me the clarity often is what makes the files pop here. Increase the vibrance and saturation just a little bit. See how that looks. And press the P button to see the before and after. You can see it's looking, in my opinion, it looks better. I'm going to play with the black levels by holding down the Alt key and moving my slider to see where the blacks start to settle in. Sometimes I won't use a slider, I just kind of use my eye. Same with the whites. If I hold down the Alt key with the whites, it shows what parts are blown out. But since they're already blown out, the tiny little parts, I'm not worried about that too much. Just kind of want to see where the white levels of the overall photo, where they lie. So it looks pretty cool. Now the good thing with the 42 megapixel uh, sensor of the A7R2 is that if I don't like the angle of view or the crop, I can actually crop it down to whoever I like. There's a lot of kind of dead space down here, so I might end up cropping that. Um, you will see, uh, zooming in, I can already see a couple dust spots here. And <clears throat> let me try the spot remove. I've never really used it. I usually just go into Photoshop to do my hardcore fine edits. And what does that mean? OK. So I highlight it, and I guess it samples it or something. I hit enter, and it gets rid of it. And these might be, I don't know if it's going to be able to handle this here with the power lines crossing through. Let's give it a try. And I didn't do that well. I'm going to save that for Photoshop. I can be more precise there. These little flare spots, uh, I'm just going to leave it. And let's see here, a manual panel where I could, oh, here we go. Mm, let's see. See here I can affect almost like the tilt. Right there looks good. 
and I can even uh, content to wear this in clone patch this uh, area in or maybe I'll just crop it off depending on how I crop this photo now going back to the adjustments here So what I've done is I've brightened up the lights, which usually in the nighttime cityscape shots are the buildings. But by brightening up the lights here, the highlights also go up. So the, to compensate for that, I had to lower the highlights down so they don't get way too bright. And I'm going to use the adjustment brush here to do some fine tuning. Um, so if I set the exposure up half a stop, I might try to brighten up this side a bit. Also add some clarity to it to make it pop. Just to kind of even out this side with this side, it's so bright. And I don't know if doing anything down here is going to do much. Probably not. Maybe along this area here. See if it does anything to this building a little bit. And I'm going to see if the dehaze for fun does anything. I've got so much um, bright, bright street lights kind of interfering with the clarity of this side just a bit. I'm just curious to see if the dehaze does anything to bring back some of that clarity. It does a little bit. Oops. Come on. Let's go back to this area and let's see. And I increase the clarity and it makes those buildings glow a little more. So it looks pretty, pretty good overall. If I hit the P button, you can see the, the stark difference. So. I'm going to let's see what the color temperature here. Let's see if I add a little bit of sometimes I'll add a little bit of magenta. Just a touch. So it's not so blue. And the split toning. I don't know if I'm gonna do too much. I think it looks fine the way it is. I'm gonna open the image. Find the appropriate crop and call it good. For fun, I'll check the aspect ratio. I like 16.9, but sometimes it doesn't work and I'll just do a custom crop. Crop just right below where that empty space is that the uh, distortion correction created. That It did get rid of some of the dead space here. Not sure if I'm still happy with all that dead space. So this might just call for custom crop. Should I get rid of this side? I don't know. Getting rid of information if I crop off here, but then again, this is kind of like a flat area. It's not so much exciting glowing light over there. So I could afford to lose that to improve this crop. And I'm debating on whether including the light post here on the very left. But then that highlight comes too close to the edge. What, um, almost like a tangent, if you know anything about that. Uh, it's a little more balanced, it seems. Maybe I'll have to fill in this top area with content aware. Maybe if I click this content aware, let's see what it does with it for fun. 
you know, it's not a bad job what it did. Content to where you'd have to look close to really see where it, like right there, it's not perfect on the power lines. It's not too bad. No one, I don't know. I might clone brush some of these flare lines up a little bit just to kind of tie it all together. But overall, it's not bad. This crop is a little more effective, I think. So I think I might end it there. I'm going to finish this off with the clone tool. Well, heck, let me just do it here. I might as well. And maybe try to get rid of the dust spots too while I'm at it. So I got my stamp tool and I'm going to sample. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sample this area here. And then all I'm going to do is extend it a little bit. Very lightly and fade it out. So then you can see, see that? So it just looks, it looks a little more natural. So if I sample right here, right in between these two lines, the white lines, hold down the Alt key, tap it once, and then you can see, you can kind of align where you have cloned and brush in that direction, very lightly, fade it out. And there you go. Now people can't really tell. Now let's fix this power line issue, even though it's dark up there and not many people are likely to inspect. But again, I'm going to sample right on the power line, so it kind of gives me a guide, a marker here. So within the cursor is the preview of where you sampled. Sorry about the noise construction outside. And there you go. Now I'm going to sample again down here. Whoops. I didn't line it up well enough there. There we go. Now, if it looks a little imperfect, I might go into a liquify tool and adjust that and push it so it's perfectly straight. But I'm just kind of showing you how the basic uh, clone tool works. I'm going to sample down here where it's nice and straight. Come back up here. And that worked pretty good, pretty well. Sample down here. Go back up here. Brush it in. There we go. And here it's not perfectly straight. Straighten that out. And we got one more, and this one's ever so faint. And it's good enough. There. Oh, and I forgot these little dust spots on the sensor. That's what you get when you're using F16, F18, or whatever. 22. Let's sample here. There we go. And let's sample here. Let's try that again. Well, it created a little bright spot here, so I need to fix that. Create another layer, set the mode to darken.
and that helped it quite a bit. A little transition here, I'm just going to use the patch tool to kind of blend it all together. And looks good. Whoops. And this little cloud right here, I don't know if it's a cloud or a faint flare, so I'm just going to um, use the patch tool to just kind of get rid of that. And one more final touch I'm going to do is I'm going to brighten the sky, increase the glow here to kind of balance it a little more with the brightness here. So I'm using my curves. Oh, that's kind of cool. Sometimes you get these surprises. And let me do a comparison here. It's not too bad. Uh, maybe it's too bright. See, I like the brightness of the actual buildings themselves, but not too keen on the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer mask on. Whoops. Might have done that accidentally. And let me keep that brightness in the city. I want to keep the sky dark there we go but I'm leaving that glow here on purpose which was my original intention so it actually works out pretty good if I just keep the sky dark and brighten up everything else but maybe I'll keep this road a little dark too. There we go. Well, I'm just going to call it good for this one. Thank you for watching.